is with us in Morgantown, West Virginia. Hey, Alex, how are you? Good, how are you? Better than I deserve. What's up? <laughs> um, I was calling because about a year ago I got divorced. And um, since that time, I've been working really hard to do the total money makeover. And I'm hammering down on baby step two. But I just found out the home uh, that my ex-husband got sole responsibility for in the divorce is now in foreclosure, and my name is on it. Mm. Um, I'm just trying to find out what I can do to protect myself or if I should be changing anything I'm doing towards that situation. Wow. I'm sorry. You got bad legal advice um, <sighs> and because you, you gave the house away, but you kept the mortgage. Uh, mm -hmm. That happens a lot in the divorces. They just do a quit claim deed, and you give over the ownership, but you stayed on the mortgage. So you're getting ready to get foreclosed on, too, is what this means. Um, right. How far, and how far behind really is the house, did. do you know? Yeah, I'm sorry. How far behind is he, do you know? Um, about 150 days now. Okay. About $10,000. Okay, and what is your household income? Um, I now, on my income, make 35000 a year. I'm a first-grade okay. teacher. Gotcha. Okay. And um, has he had the house up for sale, trying to sell it? It is on the market for sale because part of the agreement was he had to get my name off of the, de like off of the mortgage, mm -hmm. and that was the only way that he could do it. But he's now moved, mm -hmm. and so it's not a priority for him mm -hmm. right now. So... Uh, that's well, he's getting is. ready to get foreclosed on, too, so it should be a priority right. to him. Um, it's not. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, uh, is the house on the market with a real estate agent? It is. It has been for about eight months now. Okay. What are they asking for it? Um, I think 290 now is what it's at. Okay. And what is the mortgage balance? Uh, 280 <laughs> Okay. All right. And what kind of a loan is this, FHA, VA, or conventional? A VA loan. Oh, jeez. And it's <sighs> he's the, the benefits. You know, he's the one who got the VA yeah. benefits. So, yeah. um, okay, here's, so here's, here's your problem, it. all right? There's two mm -hmm. problems that go with this, and I don't know that there's a whole lot you're going to be able to do about this. But the problem number one is is that when the house forecloses, of course, and the time that it's been behind, it's damaging both his credit and your credit because you're on the loan. Yes. The second mm -hmm. problem is the, the, the foreclosure will occur, of course. That's going to continue that damage, make it even worse. You will now have a foreclosure on your credit report, um, mm -hmm. which means you're not buying anything for four or five years on a, on a mortgage right. anyway. Okay. Um, then the, the last problem is the biggest problem. I can deal with the bad credit, but the VA, uh, will chase you to the ends of the earth for the difference. They'll go after him first as the veteran. Um, uh, but if they sell this house for 250 and there's 280 owed, they're going to come after you guys for that other 30. Mm -hmm. That's, that's the deficit balance. And both of you are on the note and the VA is relentless. Um, and so you'll have to deal with them when they come to you. I wouldn't bother with them until they come to you. It's a slight possibility they'll go after him and never bother you, but it's a fairly slight. They're, they're the most aggressive of the mortgage types for going after deficits and going after the different, you know, the differing balance versus what, what they sell it for versus what it, what it, what that was owed. Um, what, right. is, what is his income? Um, the last that I was aware, it was about sixty to 70000 a year. Mm, okay. Yeah. Well, they're more... We had a lot of debt. <laughs> yeah. They're more likely to come after him. And so, really, the only thing you could do today is anything you can do with him or the real estate agent to encourage... Have they set the foreclosure date? Um, no, they said it could be any time, yeah, okay. uh, from June on. Yeah, of course. Yeah, it could be June to the next June. It just depends on how diligent they are, which a lot of times they aren't. So what I would encourage you to do is do anything you can do with him and the real estate agent to drop the price 
and then when an offer comes in that won't cover the mortgage, that's called a short sale, and that offer mm -hmm. would be submitted to the VA, and the VA would have to approve that offer. That would get you out of them chasing you for the deficit balance if you guys can get it sold on a short sale prior to a foreclosure. Now, what you want to make sure of before you agree to sign off on this when the deal comes in is that mm -hmm. That the, v, that the VA's acceptance of the offer on short sale, listen to this word, is without recourse. And what that means is they can't chase you for differences. Okay. But I, if I'm you, I'm going to bother the real estate agent. I'm going to bother your ex and bother his attorney or have your attorney bother his attorney because he needs to get real worried about this because they're going to come after him for a bunch of money. Mm -hmm. and, and they really, really are, Alex. I mean, I deal with this all the time. They really do right. come after you, and so well, I've done. I've this been is going to bankrupt him. Be in contact with the mortgage company, you know, myself, just to see what our options are. But um, he he's not contacting them or responding to anything. And yeah. Whenever I bring it up, he he won't discuss it. So, yeah. Well, uh, to, uh, the, get the your listen, listen. Then. Yeah. Take your lawyer and spend five hundred bucks and sue his butt then. Okay. And get him get him drug into court in front of the judge to where he gets dadgum serious because he's in contempt of court here by not dealing with this. And so mm -hmm. this house needs to be on the market on a short sale. You need to be bothering him and bothering the realtor. And if you can't get his attention, then use your attorney and the judge to smack some sense into this idiot because he, him just walking away from this is going to kill him too. Okay? Right. But you're attached to the hip still is the problem with this fool. And so you're going to smack some sense into him. And if he can't get it by you or the realtor or your lawyer talking to him, then have the judge do it in divorce court before this house slips away. Because if you can spend a little bit of money and a lot of bothering somebody, squeaky wheel gets the oil and get, and get this house sold on a short sale, it will save you a lot of pain later. You will not have a foreclosure in your name. A short sale is damaging to your credit, but not as much as a foreclosure. But the big thing is they won't be coming after either one of you for the deficit. And that's by far your best choice. And it's worth some effort on your part and his part to cause that to happen. Now, if none of that happens and they foreclose, well, just ignore it. Just ignore it and don't worry about it until they call you. And if they call you, just laugh and say, I'm a first grade teacher. I make $35,000 a year. Good luck. I ain't got any money. I'm not able to give you guys anything. You need to chase your deadbeat veteran over there. He's the only one that can pay anything because he's got a much better job than I've got making twice what I make. And by the way, he's the veteran. So go after him and just laugh at him. And, just cont and then someday you may have to negotiate your part of the loan or the deficit, but that may be three, four, five years before you have to deal with that. So if you can't get the house sold on a short sale before foreclosure, after that, I just get real quiet and just okay. don't, don't have a bunch of conversations with them and just let, be hard to work with and point them back at him and give them his home address, you know, and just continue to okay. push that and, and, turn them loose on him because he's the one dropped the ball on this obviously and mm -hmm. uh you know if if both Should of you did everything you can do and you can't get the house sold then you did all you can do and all you can do is all you can do you know and, and you just you know after that you you just uh again walk away from it emotionally and deal with it when it comes up at some point in the future thanks for calling in so what's the lesson for you listeners from that call if you're going through a divorce or you know someone that's going through a divorce, do not sign a quit claim deed. Don't give someone ownership in the house. I don't care what your attorney says. Your attorney's an idiot if they're telling you to do that because you're still on the mortgage. The only way you sign that quit claim deed is if they refinance and get a new mortgage and get your name off of it or the house gets sold and the mortgage gets paid off. But don't you give somebody a house and keep the mortgage. People do that every day in divorces. It's common practice because it's the easiest way, but it's stupid. It'll get you caught into Alex's situation. What a mess she's in. Bless her heart. This is the Dave Ramsey Show. Hey, guys. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, click the subscribe button to get the latest content and check out these other great clips from the show.